So I'm going to talk about um, a, a little bit of a different approach uh, to uh, ventilating uh, calf barns. And uh, the, the reason why I um, basically came up with this approach is because there's a lot of interest in the uh, dairy in industry, at least in the nor upper northeast and somewhat probably in the Midwest, of um, <clears throat> raising calves in a group housing situation. And so this just happens to be a, a shot of a barn and, and the, um, get the pointer here. And um, these are all group house calves here. And these white boxes happen to be milk stations. And so um, there's, a, you know, there's, a, there's a, quite a few reasons why uh, this is of interest to the dairy industry. Um, as the farms tend to get larger, um, there's just lots, you know, a lot of more calves to manage on a farm at one time. So there's interest for that reason. Um, <clears throat> adoption of auto feeders, so um, basically moving the responsibility of an individual to feed the calves two or three times a day, um, and replacing with a with an auto feeder, like is shown here, um, has um, you know resulted in calves. Um, interest in putting calves in, in barns more so. Uh, challenges with weather. Um, the, uh, a lot of this country has faced some severe challenges with weather. And um, I know a lot of the uh, clients I have um, struggle to keep uh, labor um, in the wintertime interested in taking care of calves outside. And um, so that's, that's certainly another thing. And then they're always looking for improved performance. And um, they way that's usually looked at for dairy calves is looking at the average daily gain of a calf over its pre-weaned period. And so looking at what they could do um, in, inside a barn and maybe in a little bit more of a controlled situation, and a little better feeding regime possibly compared to outside in hutches is also um, driving this. So um, I can recall back 20 years ago, uh, almost 20 years ago when I came to Cornell, that there was a lot of interest at the time in putting calves in greenhouses. Um, and these are individual pens, obviously. But I do remember there was quite a bit of challenge at the time with having a successful housing situation there. And I thought, well, if we're going to invest this kind of money, um, you know, again, in a, in, a, in a barn and put calves in, then we're going to have to basically make sure we take care of business this time around for it to be successful. Um, so we know group housing, uh, group house barn, excuse me, just like any other dairy barn, they really need to be designed uh, with a basic needs in mind. So in this case, it's for the calf. Um, what are those basic needs? Well, <clears throat> nutrition, um, quality, and quantity of feed is important. Uh, access to clean, uh, free access to clean water, uh, clean, dry, and comfortable resting area, pathogen management, observation by caretaker, and this adequate draft-free ventilation. So uh, these are all important items. And um, I get asked to come out and troubleshoot calf barns quite frequently. Um, so this is basically the list I use when I go out and do my, my troubleshooting calls. Mm -hmm. um, but we're, for today, we're going to focus on this, this ventilation. So after I go through a couple of slides on the basics of ventilation, make sure we're well grounded on that, then I'm going to go through a couple examples of, of applying a, this novel approach to, um, to find our to group house, group ha um, group fed calf barns. So the key with ventilation is we have to have air exchange. And so basically, we have fresh air coming into a barn, mixing with the contaminants that are generated either directly or indirectly by the animal, so moisture, dust, pathogens, heat, and manure gases. And then, and then that air is, is uh, expelled out somewhere else. And the key word here is slightly. Um, so if we have slightly stale air coming out, that means we have a, you know, a real high chance of good air in a barn for the calves. Uh, we, with calves, we need to be aware of that they are subject, are sensitive, excuse me, to a draft. Um, there is a little bit of information in the literature about uh, what um, has been thought to be a draft on a calf. This is old information, um, and I don't really um, pay a lot of attention to this because there's a lot of factors there. But in my work, um, in looking at calves and taking air measurements with uh, with good instrumentation, I'm saying around 50 to 75 feet per minute is about the most we want to be. Um, on executed calves in the winter time. Um, <clears throat> we mentioned before this, uh, you know, one of the contaminants in the barn is manure gases. Um, this happens to be a, a, you know, a loafing area for, uh, for cows. But basically, the point is that this manure, um, as it decomposes, is going to generate manure gases. Some of those manure gases are lighter than air, and some of them are heavier than air. And so um, <clears throat> we need to really do a good job of making sure that in a calf barn, um, where these manure gases and other contaminants are generated, that we get good air exchange at calf nose level. So 
So this is a um, um, a retrofitted calf feeding barn, um, group house, group fed. If you look in the lower right hand corner here, there's several nipples uh, which are fed by a uh, old, basically a high line, the same thing as that was used in tie stall barns. Um, so they supply uh, acidified milk to these nipples through a high line located up here. Anyway, um, <clears throat> what we really want to make sure is we focus on where that calf's nose is. And in that whole uh, foggy area I just uh, highlighting here, that's anywhere in that area is where the calf's nose is. And that's where I'm most interested in making sure we have good air exchange. So um, when we approach this from a standpoint of um, designing a barn, if we're going to use uh, fans to mechanically ventilate a barn, we're looking at four ventilation seasons. There's a cold or winter season, which we're in now. Uh, here soon we'll be in this uh, transition season, late fall, early springtime. Um, and then as it gets warmer, you know, we'll get into the warm ventilation season, and in the summertime we have a hot period. So um, there's different air exchange rates required for all four of these ventilation seasons, and we use that information along with some common sense to come up with what the right system should be. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned the mechanical system is one way to go, and we're going to talk about that. Um, but there's also natural ventilation, and we can combine natural ventilation with uh, mechanical assist if we need be, if needed be. But for this, uh, for today, we're going to talk about mechanical ventilation. We're really going to combine a positive system, which is basically pushing air into a barn through designated air inlets, um, and a negative system by sucking the air out of designated outlets and putting those two together, and which is in that case is called a neutral pressure system. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. Um, I, I will just start off by saying that, uh, and I kind of touched on this already, that design of a mechanically ventilated barn is a combination of art and science, or uh, common, sense and, common sense and science. Um, so we take a look at the specific barns and then do some calculations and make some judgment calls and then provide a, you know, a design that we think will work really well. So for this novel approach, um, basically um, thinking about um, a calf and what she needs, specifically, especially during the cold and transition weather, that we have to have really good air exchange at her nose level. She's very sensitive at that time frame. Has a very, doesn't have a very well-developed immune system then. So we want to have a gentle flow of air through that zone um, without it being a draft. So that's our, that's our goal there. And then um, um, if it's really cold outside, like we've had a lot of weather here in the last, uh, this month of past month of February, um, you may need a little bit of air tempering going on, depending on the barn and some other things. So thinking about tempering the air coming into the barn, um, and I'll go through that a little bit more. Uh, in the summertime, uh, we can jump over to a system that's more conventional where we're just going to basically push hot air, or push uh, ventilation air into the barn um, or draw it out either way. So we would just use a positive or negative system. So um, here's the uh, a drawing, um, cross-sectional drawing, if you will, of a calf barn. It has this neutral pressure system, and it's kind of a little bit of a different way of doing it. So on the lower left-hand side and the lower right-hand side, these uh, boxes with what looks like a starfish is basically an air duct with a fan pushing air into the duct, um, and the air travels uh, through the calf zone, and it is sucked out of the barn to a low-grade air plenum with fans at either one or both ends of it there. So the keys to success here is, one, again, emphasizing this calf nose zone, nose zone which is in the hatched area, um, and then also um, making sure that the rest of the barn is sealed up tight so we can really control the air streams through the barn. Um, we don't hear a lot of people talking about air streams when we talk about ventilation, but I believe in, uh, that knowing, and particularly knowing where the air streams are, are Important. So with the barn closed up tight, our um, green arrows here are representing the airflow, and it can only go basically where I'm showing it. This is a floor plan of that same barn. This is a barn in Vermont that we designed. It's been up for about four years. So um, <clears throat> just a couple highlights here. Each one of those um, squares is a calf pen. There's uh, eight pens per side. And uh, those of you interested, in this case, they're uh, 15 by 15 pens. And like I said, eight pens per side. Uh, so here's the barn actually that was built um, following the design uh, in the foreground here. Um, and it's a, good, it's a really good barn to mechanically ventilate. There's a bunker silo over here. There's another barn here. Behind me in this picture is a big tree stall barn. Um, even though this, this calf barn is up on a hill it's, and there's trees behind it, it's not very well exposed to any, any kind of wind. So um, mechanical is a good way to go. So we have um, louvers in the gable. 
um, to let air into the attic, because we're going to use the attic as an air plenum, air supply. Um, so we have to let the air into the attic through these gables, and there's um, same louvers on the opposite end wall. Um, once we're in the barn, there is a ceiling, again, to make that air plenum enough. So in this case, it has some insulation above it, I think, if I recall correctly. But this is a ventricle air shaft here that's basically um, supplying air to a fan that's located right here. So this fan right here is drawing air in through those gables into the attic, down through this vertical air shaft, and then pushing it horizontally along the length of this um, air duct with the holes uh, shown. And um, there's just a couple of notes there. There's the holes. Um, so if we have a little bit of perspective of that same air duct, supply duct, um, in the um, foreground is, uh, is a um, heat exchanger. And uh, so basically, if we need to temper the air when it gets really cold, um, there is a on-demand um, hot water system that will basically provide hot water to this exchanger. And so the air coming through it will be tempered. We're not trying to warm the barn here. We're just trying to take the edge off the air if it's 20, 30, 40 below outside, like it, like it has been this winter. Um, and the fans behind that. Uh, and this picture on the lower right-hand corner is just of the um, on-demand uh, boiler that's located in the utility room where they mix the uh, liquid feed. Uh, so looking down at uh, you know, almost a grade here of one of these air ducts, um, basically there's the holes. And these holes are all sized based on with some engineering calculations. Um, and you'll notice there's a couple different sizes of holes there. But anyway, each one of those holes has air coming out of it. And the way we design it is that uh, air comes out pretty, pretty much uniformly all the way down each hole. Uh, we've done some checking to make sure that happens, and we're happy about that. The air moves, again, out, spreads out a little bit, slows down, so it's not a draft. Comes across to the center of the barn um, from both sides, and it is basically sucked into a floor grate. Again, these holes that are shown in this floor grate are also sized and spaced to make sure we get good uniform, what I call, sheet airflow through that calf zone. So we don't want to create a, a situation where we're, dra we're sucking the, all the air to one point. Um, <clears throat> once it gets through the, uh, the holes in the uh, in ground or below grade floor gutter, um, it's sucked either to the, to the top of the picture here or to the bottom, depending on where we are in the barn, because there's a fan at both ends. So this is the fan outside um, of that barn that's basically providing that negative pressure in that in ground duct, and this air's discharging. Uh, to the left here. Um, so there's two of these. One is located there, and another one which really can't be seen in this perspective, but it's at the opposite end. They're exactly the same fan. Uh, this, this barn does have curtains on it. That the farm did want to have the ability to open the curtain sidewalls up in the summertime. So um, they chose to go with uh, these inflatable curtains, which I thought was a, you know, was a good choice because, again, the barn needs to be sealed tight up through the calf zone so we can control the um, air streams in that winter and transition period. And if we had a floppy curtain in there, that would not necessarily allow that to happen. So just some general thought shots inside. Um, they do use calf blankets in the winter, which uh, we think is a, is, a, is a good thing for the calves, no matter what ventilation seasons you, uh, system is used. Uh, water drinkers in the back, eight calves per pen. Um, here's a shot in the summertime, um, or not, it's not winter anyway. And uh, anyway, the, the farms had about, to, I talked to them last spring, they had about 1,350 calves through it, and they had very, very minimal um, respiratory treatment. Um, so they've been very happy. They do monitor the weight gains in that barn, and um, pushing two, two or a little bit more, on average, two pounds per calf, sorry, I'm sorry, two, two pounds of gain per calf per day, um, which was their minimum goal. This is another barn that I'll just show you some highlights of, and then uh, then I will be finished. Uh, so this barn is a little bit different. It's got big, much bigger pens, um, and each one of these overhead doors lines up with a pen, so we can see three of them, almost three of them anyway, from this perspective. Um, i highlight here, there's some uh, discharge fans on the sidewall. This is 100% mechanically ventilated barn. There is no curtains on it. And um, this barn is in upstate New York. So same approach, basically. Um, we're going to seal the barn up tight. We're going to make sure that we can get air flow through the calf pens at nose level. And there's eight pens in this barn. And uh, so basically just highlighting one of the pens there on this floor plan. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit more space per calf here, just personal preference by the farm. Uh, instead of that 28 square foot per calf, they're at 46, um, up to 25 calves per pen. Um, just a side note on my, my opinion is that uh, based on looking at a lot of these barns, 
uh, we can get we can be much more closer to that 28 or 30 square foot per calf if we bed regularly than we need to go with this extra square footage. Uh, eight pins in this barn, and um, again, the air comes in through pressure ducts um, on this side, and then it's basically uh, drawn over to the, uh, in this case, the top of the picture on the floor plan through uh, exhaust air plenum that's located in the ground. And um, so that's the green arrow showing that. Um, once it's in air plenum, it travels to one or both at one end or the other of the barn, where again, there's a fan at each end providing that negative pressure. So a fan located here, a fan located there. Okay. So here's an inside shot. Um, here's the stacks of air plenums. So actually, in this case, there's four of them, one for each ventilation season. Obviously, when we get into the summer, we need a lot more air. We have a much bigger air plenum for the summer than the, the warm transition and cold ones are down lower as, as we go into the cooler season. So again, the air goes across the barn this way through the calf nose zone. And that slide just spells out the, the uh, air plenum. <clears throat> um, so we have the cold here, transition warm and hot. Uh, this is a picture on the outside of the barn. So um, we basically remember that air plenum I just showed. These are the fans that are pushing air into those four air plenums. And you can see that three of the four fans are running um, as we were speaking. They also can temper the air here, provide heat um, if they want to. Um, at the beginning, at the uh, opposite end of the opposite sidewall um, is where the uh, in ground negative pressure grate uh, uh, air plenum is. Excuse me. Um, and it works out good because in this case they have a area here of three or four feet that they they clean up every day, twice a day, with a with a scraper and a hose. Um, because here's where the automated feeder is. And so that air plenum also is designed as a open flow, uh, gravity flow uh, gutter. So that all the wash water um, also is discharged or conveyed out of the barn through that uh, low grade plenum. So in this case, it serves both as an air plenum and as a, um, a, a gutter to um, collect and then uh, convey by gravity the wash down water to one end of the barn or the other, and then it's pumped out from there. So there's the automated feeder, uh, designated wash down area, um, and then the, um, the gutter with our air plenum. Upper left hand corner here is just a close up of that uh, wash down gutter slash air plenum. A little bit different take here on providing, um, using materials to build the, uh, the top of it and, and with the holes in as needed to, to create that uniform sheet airflow through the calf zone. Over here on the right is basically the uh, one end of there where we're sucking air out of that, that plenum. And um, here is basically sidewall fans that are on for the warm and hot periods. And so you can see here they're running. So this is a good clue that picture was taken when it's uh, warm or hot outside. Uh, a little bit of fuzzy picture here. I apologize about that. But basically, um, all these barns, we use standard air controllers. This happens to be from Aerotech. Um, there are other companies as well that have uh, good ventilation controllers that work well. Um, you can find actually there are controllers that I um, have identified that will control all the ventilation um, and also any heating that's, that's desired to temper the air. We can do it all with one controller. Um, many times the uh, motor starters and uh, heaters, I should say, for the ventilation fans are in a separate box from the controller. Um, so basically, got the controllers that's taking input from the barn and making decisions based on what the barn manager has said, and sending signals to this box, and then this box in turn basically turns the fans on and off as as needed. Uh, these happens to be the uh, owner, uh, her son of this farm. Um, they're very complimentary of the uh, of success in here. Um, they have said, even said that this is the best thing they've done in the last five years at their barn at their farm. So they're very happy with the auto feeders. They're very happy with the air in the barn. And, um, but they have also learned that, uh, like any other mechanical ventilation system on a farm, it does require maintenance. And um, so they kind of learned that a little bit the hard way because we know that as fans run and they get dirty, they don't work as well. So they've, they kind of basically found out that they needed to clean the fans more often than they thought, um, which I think they, change, they clean them twice a year <coughs> regularly now. and then. Um, Maybe again in the summer if they seem getting dirtier than they, they were hoping for. One of the things that they do do is they bed in here uh, quite re regularly with equipment, so that generates a lot of dust. So 
that adds to the, uh, the dirt on the fan. So uh, in closing, I think that you know when you're going to put calves in a barn, uh, the environment the calf is exposed to it directly depends on the barn design and the management. And um, I feel like that uh, for us to have success with these group house, group fed systems, we really need to make sure we get our ventilation right. And uh, we've been spending a lot of time working with industry on it. So um, other than the two I showed you, we've had numerous other farms now that we've, we've done the design for and actually implemented this novel approach. And uh, so it seems like it's been, I've, it's been out about four years, a little reserved in, in making it widespread known, widespread known until we basically made sure it's going to work really well. At this point, I have no concerns with it at all. So last slide, and um, thank you for your attention. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Shin.